Welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video we are going to take a close look at another game stick from China. And this is the Amialic 4.3 sticks, also known as the GT10. <laughs> it's a jungle out there when it comes to different game boxes, but what is actually in game box when you're picking up from AliExpress? So for example, what you're going to get is just a plug and play solution. Back in the day, we had these huge cartridges with game systems. We're not going to need them anymore. Why is that? Very simple, because this is just an HDMI dongle that you plug in your TV and you can play your games. <sighs> and when you're looking at the package itself, it's kind of laughable. Professional game chip. We have a dual rocker control, 2.4 gigahertz wireless search games, 3D games and connect to TV. It makes no sense whatsoever. There are a lot of different devices out there. In my opinion, way too many. But this is just these plug and play solutions. So what you're going to get is the game stick itself. Yep, it's just a plug and play device. The only thing you need to take consideration is that because of the width of the device itself, sometimes it doesn't fit your board and you need an extension cord for that. In the box, we're going to get ourselves everything that we're going to need, including an extension cord. I think it's very convenient because you're not going to get this every single time. The device itself is going to be powered by 5 volt, and you're going to plug in the micro USB cable here at the side. Then we're having here the SD card. Take consideration, they are using very cheap quality ones. So it's highly recommended to make a backup and to put it maybe on a higher quality. Because these things are really slow and bad quality and can get corrupted fairly easy. So when it comes to the controllers, they're always like giving you these PlayStation 2 knockoff wireless controllers. And I can tell you the quality is very different from each product I'm reviewing. First of all, oh, <laughs> it smells really chemical. There's a sign that is not a good sign at all. So first of all, the touch of the ABXY buttons is not great at all. We do have a little bit better quality joysticks with the rubberized joystick because the cheap to the cheap cheap ones have just a plastic layer over it. Then we're having the D-pad, feels quite nice. And the normal shoulder buttons. And at the back we're going to get ourselves the battery compartment. Yeah, and I can tell you this is very difficult to basically remove the cover. It's absolutely a pain in the ass. But we're going to need two AAA batteries. And at the bottom we're going to find an on-off switch to turn the device off. But I did notice sometimes we have a battery saving with some of the controllers. So it will automatically go off when you basically like still have to turn on. They are using the special combination. And I mean like when you're looking at this device, you're having one dongle and two controller configuration. It is possible to use different controllers, but it's absolutely nightmare. So if this dongle or the controls break, it's going to be quite difficult to find a matching pair again. Connecting the power can be done in two different ways. If you're having a USB port at the back of your television, you can use it if you want to. If that doesn't work, you always use a separate 5 volt adapter. How do you freaking plug this thing in? There we go. Then the next thing we need to do, plug the other end into the dongle itself. And then we're going to plug this thing straight into the television. And that's it. That's the only thing that we need to do. Last but not least, of course, we need to plug in the USB dongle for the controller. And we need to how? Damn it. Ups or down. There we go. And we're ready to go. So after booting up the monitor, it automatically boot up the game stick because my USB comes from the television itself. You're going to get a couple of game stick 3D logos and this intro that we cannot skip. After that, this short message. We're just going to get ourselves the game box loading screen and that's it. And we're ready to go. But after waiting for a couple of minutes, this is what you're going to get. But what they did with this game stick is slightly different with your typical Super Console X. First of all, there is no way of changing anything out. When pressing select or start like normal, you're going to get an extra menu where you can swap the theme and stuff like that. That doesn't work at all. You need to press select and start. Here we're going to get ourselves the emulation station settings. Here we can basically go into the settings and we can check out what kind of signal output we wanted to use. Um, always show the boot video so that's something you can turn off if you don't want to see that. Here we're having unlock settings but the weird thing is input code to unlock. So we need to put in a code to unlock this feature and that's a little bit unfortunate. We do have the option to control settings but that's it. So if you want to change out anything there is nothing to do about it. If there is a problem with a certain emulator it's going to be absolutely difficult. 
But what I wanted to focus mainly, we're going to focus on PlayStation 1 all the way up to their PlayStation Portable just to see how it's actually going to be running. Spoiler alert, it's going to be not having like perfect support for every single emulator simply because this is a low power specification chipset. And for some emulators we need to have a lot of power, sometimes even a mini PC to run them perfectly. So what you can change when pressing select to start the first time, we're going to get ourselves the option for the retro arc. But the weird thing is, I cannot do anything at this point. So I don't know what's going on, why it has a problem sometimes. You need to mess around, press some buttons. It actually, then it <laughs> finally started to do something. Here we're gonna close the content, but it automatically goes back to the main menu. So we cannot really mess around with RetroArch if you have some issues. The first thing I've noticed is that they're using this weird looking polished filter over it. And also we don't have an XPS ratio option. Normally we do have it with some cool bezels, but so far I can see there is no way of changing that out. So we're stuck with what you're seeing over here. But if you're into the old school stuff, on the plug and play device like this, it runs just fine. Moving on to the Sega CD, here we can find some couple of games. There are a lot of them on here, unfortunate, but they don't use the weird filter that we've seen with the Super NES. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to check out is some Sega Dreamcast. Let's try some Dead Alive 2, one of my favorite games to play, but also a very demanding game. And you can already hear from the beginning that it struggles. And that is what you're going to get with these cheaper devices. I just wanted to move to the Sega Dreamcast part with only the two dimensional games. Simply because sometimes three dimensional games are too demanding for these low power chips. But you're going to get a little bit better performance when it comes to the two dimensional stuff. And also a great way to test the D pad. Yup, the D pad is absolutely great. So where we have like a lot of problems with the three dimension games, two dimensional seems to be working just fine. But if you just wanted to check out some three dimensional games, it's going to be also a mixed performance when it comes to PlayStation Portable. But surprisingly, there are some games that seem to be playable. I'm quite surprised to see that when pressing select and start, we do have the option to go back to the PP SSPP emulator. And what we can do is very simple. Pressing select start, you can make a quick save, quick load if you want to. And here you can even mess with the settings. Take consideration with these low power chips, there's not a lot of stuff you can mess with, simply because everything has been set to a certain resolution. But it's quite surprising that they set it to two times resolution, that's kind of weird to be honest, because that like is not a great thing they did there. It's going to be looking slightly better, but we do have like a limitation when it comes to the FPS. So again, there is still room for improvement, and you can always mess around if you want to. Next up, I just wanted to check out some DS on here just to see actually how it works. The first thing I did notice now is that we do have a problem with the settings. We cannot really easily go back. And we cannot switch the screen to a certain position. So I don't know what's going on with this, but also the reset doesn't work by pressing select and start. So I'm stuck in the breaking emulator. Let's move on to N64, and I can already tell you a lot is not going to be working like it should be. And I mean particularly when it comes to like more demanding games. You can really see at the right we do have um, a weird thing going on. It's absolutely on low resolution, no upscaling. Alright, so let's see a way. Check out if every single button has been mapped. The button mapping is absolutely great. The shooting they have been mapped to the shoulder buttons. But the overall gameplay is not bad at all. So when it comes to PlayStation 1, we have so many devices now that can play it correctly. Bloody Roar 2 is one of those benchmark games that I wanted to check out to see how it runs. No upscaling whatsoever. 
but we do have some great performance. So if you just want to enjoy some old school PlayStation 1, they look great. But let's take a close look at some meme emulation. Mortal Kombat 2 is one of those test games. There is no shadows, I think. Nope. I did notice a lot of people were mentioning that in my previous comment videos. That because there was no shadows. Kind of weird. It is running on, I think it was the MAME 2003 emulator. Maybe we need to switch it out. But yeah, here comes the problem. There is no way of switching it out. So what you're going to see is what you're going to get. So one of the features they're having in the system itself is the search like they said on the box. When pressing Y, it will take a little bit of time to boot it up. But I can tell you that it seems to be working just fine. Well, let's check out if I can go to the list over here. But I do love that they indicate what kind of platform you're having. But what are we actually going to get in the inside? There is of course nothing much in this tiny stick. But I'm happy with that they implemented a little bit of a cooling. It's only a piece of metal with some thermal paste on it or thermal pad. That's it. That's the only thing. Because it does give like a very nice weight to it. So it's a very thick piece of metal. But when you're looking at the chip, this thing is a very interesting piece of tech. <laughs> if you think about it, this is the only thing that you're going to have. This is a completely game system in one. So what is also interesting that we do have a very old chip, or this is the S905. It's not the one that we have seen before when it comes to the first generation of Super Console Xs. But this is the S905L Stripe B. That's it. But this is basically not a very high powered like piece of equipment. But the overall performance when it comes to the... Yeah, emulation, yeah, I'm quite surprised and it seems to be running just fine or most of the basic stuff. The construction of the stick itself, most of the parts have been clicked together. There are no screws whatsoever. So let's put this SD card back in. Oh, and yeah, take consideration, make a backup out of this because if it's going to be breaking, you're going to have a pain in the ass to installing some new software on it. Or maybe it's not even in, it's not even possible at all. The conclusion is quite simple, it's old tech slapped into a stick. This is more like a plug and play solution they're having. You just plug it in and you can just play your games and don't be afraid that you're going to mess something up when it comes to the overall software. There is no tinkering required but there is also no tinkering that you can do with it. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and it would be great to see you in the next video.